The World Between Worlds, Ahsoka's Unexpected Reunion. In the gripping last few moments of Episode 4, the skilled and resilient Ahsoka faces a shocking challenge. With her hand burned, her typical combat prowess is hampered, giving her adversary Balin an upper hand. But her story doesn't end with her plummeting from the cliff. Instead, she awakens on a bridge so familiar and yet so otherworldly. There, amidst the echoing vastness, she hears a voice she never thought she'd hear again. Turning around, the camera captures a sight that sends shivers down our spines, as well as hers. Anakin Skywalker. Seemingly unchanged from the last moment she saw him over two and a half decades ago. This unexpected reunion, bridging the gap of time and fate, raises countless questions and possibilities. Was this encounter a mere vision? Was it all happening inside of her head while she's drowning? Or has Ahsoka unlocked deeper secrets of the Force that even she is unaware of? As the not-so-luminous Force ghost or figure of Anakin stood before her, his voice, laden with surprise and maybe a hint of sorrow, breaks the silence. I didn't expect to see you so soon. The scene then plunges into darkness, and then unmistakably, chilling notes of the Imperial March, the famous score of John Williams, fills the void. It's an auditory reminder of Anakin's fall from grace and his transformation into Darth Vader. Yet I can't help but wonder if this iconic score is merely a smokescreen, a play on our expectations designed to tease and mislead. Because what follows is the genesis of a theory that will delve deep into the mysteries of the Force. Before diving in, it's important to recognize the genius of Dave Filoni, arguably the most influential mind at Lucasfilm today. Filoni's vision and storytelling might have just revived the very essence of Star Wars with this last episode of Ahsoka. Rebels fans might recall the 2018 epilogue, the ending of the Rebels series, where we witness Sabine touching the mural and Ahsoka appearing and them venturing together in search of Ezra and Thrawn. Remarkably, episode 2 of the Ahsoka series revisited this exact moment, but not all was the same. In the original, Ahsoka donned a pristine white cowl. Her silhouette was reminiscent of Gandalf the White a parallel drawn by Filoni himself. Yet in this new live-action rendition, Ahsoka the White has been replaced by a figure cloaked in the traditional brown of the Jedi. The staff that she was carrying in the Rebels rendition is nowhere in sight. This is a conspicuous alteration because things like this normally don't happen, especially not under Filoni's watchful eyes. While many brushed it off as a mere change in writing direction, I believe there's more beneath the surface. This discrepancy is the very foundation of our theory. Drawing upon the last few momentous moments of this episode 4, there's a palpable gravity in the realization that Ahsoka has once more stepped into the mysterious realm of the world between worlds. Like many of you, I was deeply moved, questioning the very fabric of the Star Wars reality we thought we knew. The eeriness of this plane, devoid of its familiar portals or doors that we saw in the Rebels animated version, paired with the appearance of Anakin Skywalker exactly as Ahsoka last saw him over two and a half decades ago, raises questions that claw at the edges of my mind and I'm sure yours as well. But let's explore a theory born out of these enigmas. Repeatedly, we've seen Ahsoka falter in her role as a mentor to Sabine. As we know, her training is incomplete. She said this herself. She said she walked away from her master. Her guidance sometimes misses the mark with Sabine. Sabine's eventual submission to Balin's will in offering up the map stems from this incomplete tutelage. But why does Ahsoka falter? Because Anakin, her master, couldn't complete her training. His own formation was disrupted given that Obi-Wan, despite his noble intentions, trained Anakin out of obligation to Qui-Gon Jinn. Had Qui-Gon survived his fatal duel with Maul, Anakin's destiny might have taken another turn. 
We see history echo itself. Ahsoka mirrors Anakin's journey. Both never completed their training, both confronted failures, and both were overwhelmed by attachments leading them and their apprentices to the dark side. George Lucas once said, Star Wars is like poetry. It rhymes. And here in the infinite expanse of the world between worlds, we witness the poetic symmetry of Ahsoka's and Anakin's narratives intertwining. This reunion offers Ahsoka a unique chance, a chance to complete her training in a dimension where time is but a concept. And this leads me to a revelation. Could it be that the scene we witnessed in the 2018 Rebels epilogue has not yet transpired? The deliberate nuances in the live action adaptation of the Rebels epilogue are anything but accidental especially under the watchful eye of Dave Filoni, who, as we already discussed, is emerging as one of the premier storytellers of our generation. What if this seeming inconsistency isn't an oversight, but rather a genius stroke of storytelling? Picture this. Ahsoka, in the timeless realm of the world between worlds, has a chance to not just mend the fractures of her past, but to be mentored to be molded and to become the formidable Jedi she was destined to be under the guidance of her former master, Anakin Skywalker. With her training fulfilled and her spirit emboldened, she would emerge as Ahsoka the White, an embodiment of wisdom, strength, and hope. Empowered with this newfound skill, knowledge, and wisdom, she would then seek to re-encounter Sabine, to rectify her past missteps and provide the mentorship Sabine so desperately requires, enabling her to flourish both as a Mandalorian and potentially as the first Jedi who comes from Mandalore in over a thousand years. To overcome adversaries as formidable as Morgan Elsbeth, Balin, Hati, and Grand Admiral Thrawn, unity is paramount. And Hu Yang's words resonate now more than ever. Sticking together is vital. This newfound unity is forged not just through friendship or camaraderie, but through their evolution into their fullest forms as Mandalorian and Jedi. While this video is approaching its end, the theory is clear. We are yet to truly witness the live-action portrayal of Ahsoka the White and Sabine the Jedi in their quest to rescue Ezra and confront Thrawn's might. When that moment arrives, our antagonists, Balin, Hati, Morgan Elsbeth, and the tactile genius Thrawn, will confront a force unlike they have ever faced. The light of the Jedi will shine once more, and against its radiance, darkness stands little chance.